Brizzy Pro and the new features. So if you're excited to see about the block dividers, also the graphic filters and the video filters alongside the new post widget, then this video is gonna be for you. So stick around and check all those out right now. Now, if you're following Brizzy Pro, you can't help but notice that they're churning out the updates to this Brizzy Pro beta at a hell of a rate. And this week, or the last seven days, we've seen three different releases. Today, we're looking at 0.08 and also the last two releases and what they brought with it. So we're going to be taking a look at things like the block dividers. We're going to take a look at the filters that have been introduced for videos and images. And finally, what's been released today is the ability to create dynamic posts. So let's just jump over to Brizzy and take a look at how all these are implemented in the latest beta build of Brizzy Pro. Now working with the shape dividers in Brizzy is incredibly easy. All we need to do is have a row active and then what we can do is we can come to the little icon in the top right hand corner, click on there and we're going to click on the cog icon to open up more settings. So click on the settings option, come down to more settings and that'll open up the two different tabs we currently have which is styling and advanced. If we look at the bottom now, you'll see we've got a new entry where it says dividers. We can choose the top or bottom of any of the blocks. And then we have the option then for the type of divider we want to use. And as you can see, there are a lot of options available to us. So we can go through and find one we think is going to be a good starting point. Once we've done that, we'll click. You can see that now immediately adds it to the bottom of the actual block we're working with. And now we can fine tune that if we want to. So we can use the option then to adjust the height and the scaling of the actual effect itself. So you can see we've got this option, which we now can go through and adjust. If we want to flip this so we can flip it to have it the opposite way, we can easily use that option. And it's very easy to work with. We can even bring it to the front or send it to the back, depending on the type of effect that we're working with. We also have the color option. So if we click on there, we can choose a different color. And that allows us then to easily make sure that it fits in with the different block that's above or below depending upon the position of the actual shape divider. So it's very, very easy to deal with. So we put that back to what it was, choose a different option. So you can see we can choose a different option. We can flip that if we want to. And you can see it immediately takes effect, all done in that very, very simple, typical Brizzy fashion. Now, depending upon the type of shape divider that you're using, you may need to adjust the margins at the top or bottom, depending upon the position of the shape divider. And we can do that very easily. So let's just find one we need to make some tweaks to. Let's come up and choose something that we like. Uh, we'll find something along the lines of one of the artistic kind of effects. That looks pretty good. So at the moment, you can see it's a little close on the right hand side. If I flip it over, you can see it just gets a little close. So what I can do is I can come up to the padding at the top and bottom. And in this instance, we're dealing with the bottom. So I can increase the padding and you can see that now pushes everything down. But when we use this option, we're limited to, with using the slider, at least 250 pixels. We can alter it if we want to, but we could also come down and adjust it directly on the page in a more visual fashion. This opens up the ability then to push it down to any kind of scale that we want. So we've got a nice, easy way we we'll to fine tune the design to make sure it works exactly how we want it to with the chosen divider effect that we're using, whether that's the top or the bottom of the design. And that's how easy it is to start using the shape dividers in this latest build of Brizzy Pro. Moving on from the shape dividers, we also have the image and video filters effect. Now I've already inserted a video and you can see it's in position here. Now if I want to make changes to that, it's very easy to do. All I need to do is access the options for this particular element. And this works exactly the same whether you're dealing with a video or you're dealing with an image. All we need to do is click on it. In this example, we're going to click on the play icon, which allows us to open up the options for the video. And you see we now have a tab called style. If we click on there, we have four different options available. We can adjust the hue. So as we slide that across, you can see all the colors in the image will change accordingly. So we're shifting the hue on the image. We then have the option to adjust the saturation. So if we want to pump up that color, we can do that. If we want to make it a black and white image, we can easily drag that over to the left-hand side. We can also adjust then the brightness and the contrast in the image. And you can see it's very easy to make tweaks. So we could easily come in and start to stylize this image to get a kind of weird effect to it, sort of blown out effect. It's very, very flat. So we can do whatever we want to kind of customize the image using these image and video filters. 
So this is one of those areas that if you want to stylize things and you don't want to rely upon using some third party plugin or having to use something like Photoshop, it's nice that you can do that directly inside your browser, inside Brizzy itself. Now there are a couple of things that I would like to see, more to do with just the user interface than anything. For example, if I go through and I start editing and playing about with any of these settings, if I want to go back to something like just reset everything to the starting point, I literally have to go back through and set everything back to the default value, so 0, 100, 100. 100 and 100 and so on. So it'll be nice to see in a later iteration where you have that reset option. You can simply click, puts it back to the default setting, speeds up the whole process. If I'm playing about and I don't like the result and I just want to get back to my start point, that would be something that would be nice to see. And I like to see that on pretty much anything uses the slider throughout the entire Brizzy interface. Just one of those visual things that makes life just a little bit easier when you are experimenting with various different things and you don't necessarily know what the default value was to put it back to that starting point. Now, just as I was wrapping up this video, Brizzy released another update. It's the 0 0.08 update, and with it, they brought the ability now to add in custom post layouts. In other words, we can now create custom archives if we want to and display information that we can then jump through and view the full post. And in this section, I just want to show you how easy it is. Now, it's still not fully fleshed out. There's still things that I think we really, really need to include in it. But again, same as everything else I say with this, it's a great starting point. So let's just take a look at how we can use that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down, we're going to add a new block in and add a new blank block, and we'll just quickly remove this second column. So we just got one simple container ready to work with. If we now come up to our add elements and scroll down to the bottom, you can see we've got new, a new WordPress based element, and that's the posts element. Now, the great thing about this is we can start to pull in information from ACF and from pods and so on. So we can use dynamic content to flesh out this entire new post section. So let's take a look at how we use that. Let's just get rid of the section from the left hand side, the element block, and we're going to come in and start editing. Now, even though we've got three different sections in here, which we can obviously go through and edit in much the same way as we did with the gallery sort of element. We can now come in and start creating the layout and the information we want to pull in dynamically. And like I say, we can mix that with ACF based content. Let's start off by keeping it really simple and just putting some ordinary basic information. So we're going to click on the image and what we can do is we can come up to click on the image itself from the pop up menu and click on the little dynamic icon. Click on there and we can say we want to use our featured image. We have also notice we've got artwork in there. Now, in a previous video where they introduced advanced custom fields into the Brizzy Pro Beta, I show you how to use that and we set up a new post type and artwork is one of those areas that we can pull information from. So it easily references ACF content. We're going to use the featured image for this example. Next up, we're going to come down and we're going to just change this placeholder text. We're going to get rid of that. The other thing they've updated is on a UK based keyboard, the hash symbol is in a different location. It's the shift and the three key. That's now been replaced by the proper hash symbol on the normal UK based layout keyboard. So now if I put the hash in, you can see that now pulls up a list of all the dynamic content we can start referencing. And again, we've got things like artist name, which is a custom field that I've created through advanced custom fields. So we can pull that information in directly into here as well. So let's do that. We're going to say we're going to use the artist name on this example. And once we've done that, you can see it now references the same information, the same placeholder in the next two columns. So we now know that we're creating a basic template that will pull that information in and then fill that out when we're ready to go live with this, with the information we've created and a combination of, in this example, posts and ACF custom fields. So, okay, let's just go down to the next line now. And in there, we're going to do the same again with so the hash symbol. And we're going to use the post excerpt for this example. And then we're going to come over to where the artist name is and we're just going to put in some separator and we're going to do the hash symbol again and we're going to put in the post date. So you've now got the artist name, the post date and the post excerpt. If we come over and highlight this and we'll do control B for bold so we can start styling this out. The final thing we need to do is just go and change this button to be something that's a bit more useful. So we'll just get rid of the text that's in there and we'll just say read more. Now we can create a dynamic link from there. So we can just simply click on the chain icon, click on the link, 
and you can see we can use the dynamic option, click on there, and we can say we want to go to the post URL. But again, you can see we've got various different things we can use, some things we pull in from ACF, which is great if you want to create custom fields that have custom links in there, you could then reference that directly by using the ACF, the custom data you can pull in. So we're going to keep this really simple, just say the post URL, and you can see we're done. We've created the image, we've put in our placeholders, and that's been replicated across the other two areas. Like I say, if we want to change this, we can come up and we can just edit this. You can see we've got the little WordPress icon. Click on there. So we can adjust padding, columns, row. We can also go through and specify exactly where we want to pull our data from. In this example, I want to use the music category. So I'll click on that, and you can see now that will pull the information in from there. We've got all the normal options we can duplicate. We can go into the advanced settings and so on. Now, again, as I've said many, many times in this, I can't wait until they start to pull in some data that we can see and reference. So it might pull in the first three different posts in the same way that Elementor does this. So we can see exactly what we're working with. We'll be styling things as opposed to just having these placeholders. So I'm hoping that they'll bring that in in future iterations of the pro version of Brizzy. But for now, this is what we're working with. So I'll click on update on it to save that information out. And then we can take a look at this by previewing it. So there we go. There's our post layout. You can see we pulled in the relevant image, the, the artist name, the date of the post, and the uh, sort of excerpt of information we pulled in. And also the link then with the read more button that would take us through to the relevant artist and view the information about those. So it's a very simple integration and a nice way that Brizzy works with pulling in that data from ACF and obviously toolset and pods and so on if you were using those as well. So really cool. So there we go, I'm gonna wrap the video up at this point and hopefully what I've demonstrated is how these new features are working inside Brizzy Pro. What do you think? Do you like the way they integrate all these different design tools into the overall Brizzy Pro interface and experience? Let me know in the comment section below, give me your feedback so we can have that conversation about the direction that Brizzy Pro is taking. Well, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down and let me know why in the comment section below or how I can improve the videos in the future. As always, my name is Paul C. This is this has been WP Tats and until next time, take care.